Hey there, welcome back. I'm the Fanatic, and in today's video we're going to be talking about Brandon Miller, one of the high risers of this draft, probably the highest riser, honestly. He's had a very, very solid breakout season with Alabama, averaging 18 points per game and 8 rebounds per game. I've been very impressed with what I've seen from him this year. He's averaging thir er, he averaged 38% from 3 on 7.5 attempts per game. He's been compared to guys like Kevin Durant, Rudy Gay, and Danny Granger. He's a very smooth shooting wing, and for that reason, I definitely like him a lot. But a lot of people have been worried about his tournament run. Personally, I don't place too much stock in the March Madness tournament because I really feel that we've overvalued that tournament and performance in a very limited sample size. I just don't think it's, it's consistent enough for us to really say that any player's tournament run really determines how good they are or will, how good they will be in a playoff setting. Now, Bran Miller specifically is getting a lot of hate for his run in the tournament because he was absolutely abysmal. And, you know, everyone has bad games, so I'm willing to come a break. I, again, I really don't place too much stock in the tournament. It was one of the reasons why, even though Jalen Suggs was very, very good in his tournament run, I just didn't see it as sustainable, and that was one of the big reasons I docked his draft value in his scouting report, I definitely think that Sky Barnes was the right choice for Toronto. I think that anyone looking back would say the same, really. Um, but looking at everything else, I mean, Brandon Miller, yes, I'd say maybe he should slide down to three. But honestly, he's really good. Depending what team gets the second pick, because obviously we know Victor Wembanyama is going number one. If we have a team like the Pistons, who need that smooth shooting forward, that have a lot of guards in Jaden Ivey, Cade Cunningham, Killian Hayes, who is a really undervalued player, and you need to stop disrespecting him, but I'm not getting into that rant today. No, Brandon Miller could definitely be the pick for a team like the Pistons, because they have the guards, they need the forward, it just makes sense for their timeline. Um, obviously they would prefer to have Victor Wembanyama, but if they don't get that pick, then Brian Miller is the choice. Um, but there are other teams like perhaps the Rockets. If the Rockets need, don't feel like either KPJ or maybe, oh, I forget his name. I haven't talked about him in so long. Um, uh, if they don't feel like Jalen Green and KPJ are the guys for them in the backcourt. They might look to they might look to do the thing the Cavs did a few years ago where they just draft a bunch more guards until they get their guy. And honestly, Scoot Henderson's not a bad pick. You have a really athletic backcourt if you have Jalen Green and Scoot Henderson. There is no way that any person in the league is realistically going to be able to stop that. But on the other hand, you have to consider, at what point does that backcourt just not work? Regardless, the point is that teams that need, that already have established guards are going to be looking more for that forward position, and that's definitely a chance for Bram Miller to slide up to two. But the question is, can he perform once he's drafted there? It's a tough question, but I think he can. He crashes the boards well for a forward. He's got a smooth shooting touch. He's got some decent size. And honestly, I feel like there is something there. But I'm not quite sure it's enough to get over the hump. With a guy like Victor Wembanyama, we know that him being skinny won't matter much because he has all of the tools around him. But when you look at Brand Miller, it's, okay, but can he get to the rim the way that you want your forward to. Can he play elite defense on a guy like Kevin Durant? And the more you look at it, the more holes and questions start to arise. Because with a guy like Victor Wembanyama, 
there's no way to stop him because realistically, unless he's injured, there's no stopping him. And even then, he's got the physicality and the athleticism to get play through some injuries. But with a guy like Brand Miller, you really don't know. Can he make it through the injuries? Can he make it to the rim without getting injured consistently? These are definitely big question marks for me, personally. I think that Brand Miller definitely is going to be a starter in the league, at the very least. Past that, I think he definitely has potential to be an all-star level player. I think he has potential to be the KD replacement in our next era of basketball. But I'm questioning whether or not it's realistic. Because we've seen so many guys in the past where we've given them that label of Kevin Durant because they're kind of tall and they can kind of shoot and they're a forward. But at what point are we going to say maybe there isn't another guy like KD? Maybe there just isn't. It's possible. But Brand Miller for me, I think that he he has secured his future as an NBA starter. I think that is already set out. I think he's I think he he's going to be somewhere around Josh Giddy in terms of skill level, personally. I think he's going to be just below that all-star level and never quite make it. But I definitely believe there's potential there. And if he gets drafted to the right organization that knows how to develop him, that gives him the opportunity he needs, you're looking at a Kevin Durant replacement. You're looking at an all-star here. He's a very Brandon Ingram-esque kind of player to me. And I find that really fascinating, really impressive. I think Brandon Miller is a name that we should keep track of as the next few seasons and the next decade of the NBA goes along. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, and let's hope Brand Miller is what we hope he will be.